last go around. So you came up with this, as you have an example of them, they're not made by Franklin, but of this type, where it's several glass bowls nested on, a, on an axle, and they go all around together then, so you can just move up and down like a keyboard. It's much more complicated to play, but this stayed in, in, in use even after that was invented. And despite the fact that, uh, and I gotta, I gotta get to try to get my invented here, well, first of all, I, I have found as a musician that alcohol makes everything work better for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and by that I mean cleaning my fingertips, because ethanol, yeah, ethanol is not the one you drink, right? Uh, <laughs> that's generally a bad idea. You have to have clean fingertips. I clean the glasses spurrier. Um, so the, the musical glasses, especially the harmonica, got a very bad reputation in Germany as an instrument that was driving people insane. The vibrations, <laughs> the eerie sounds, the association with Dr. Dr. Anton Mesmer, who was hypnotizing me from, from which we get the term mesmerization. Um, but it did continue on, and this instrument was made in 1830. In fact, it was patented. Again, I think it's 31 or 29, I can remember which. The opposite of the symphonium. Um, but likewise, had to have a fancy name. It couldn't just be musical glasses. It had to be the Grand Harmonica. And this was patented down in Baltimore by Francis Hopkinson Smith, a grandson, I think, of, of uh, uh, Francis Hopkinson, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. He was very interested in music and corresponded with Thomas Jefferson about the best way to settle the harpsichord. Sort of. I, I wish our college <coughs> nowadays would spend more time on discussing music and less time on politics, but, um, or whatever it is they're doing or not doing. Um, so, in my opinion, are clean enough. Um, now, I also have to get the glasses a little bit ready. You, you do have to put moisture on the glasses. Now, they're already tuned to the right pitch. If, if it's not to the right pitch, you can add a little water, and that will um, raise, raise the pitch. But if you add too much water, it, it doesn't vibrate very well either. So this sits outside my office every day. I have to listen to people. They go, oh, yeah, music. Yeah, fill these up with water, and you play them. It's like, if you fill them up with water, they would sound awful. You just need a little bit of water, which I have in one glass here. So I'm going to use my historically appropriate authentic sponge, not cellulose. You want to use a you know, stork materials. Or, and I'm going to get the, the rims a little bit wet here so we can get going. Now, um, Smith, as I said, patented this thing, and then he would also sell you a little instruction book on how to play musical classes. And we have photocopies of those. And that's why I learned uh, the basic technique and uh, picked a tune to play. Um, I think I have to remember it, but I will again put it out there as a placebo. These do come in fancier styles of cases than this, but we are fortunate that ours survived with an entire intact set of glasses. In fact, there are three spares that came with it. Uh, not spares, but additional notes to give you an extended, uh, extended range. I'm not sure where you're supposed to store those when you're not in the instrument. Those are for toasting afterwards. I guess so. <laughs> you got to do a three-part cube? You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No. no, this too is, is tends to be fairly simple music. So the piece I chose from uh, from the book uh, <coughs> is called Rousseau's Dream. And uh, I, I found the same piece actually in the book for Flagellat. Uh, <laughs> it must have been a popular piece of the day. I don't know if they mean Rousseau the philosopher or Rousseau <coughs> excuse me, the composer. <coughs> but you're going to recognize this piece actually as Go Tell Go Tell Not Road, which I assume it became that later, but it must have been a well-known tune in the time. So it's Rousseau's dream with two variations on it. So I don't think I can stall it much longer. Yeah. We're going to play Rousseau's dream. And I'm going to pray that it is Rousseau's dream and not. Darcy's nightmare. <laughs> so, okay, there we go. I don't think I need the glasses. But I'll use these glasses.
like saw the instruments and know how to play. Very <laughs> <laughs> with my, my bad playing, my bad jokes. Mm -hmm. And we hope you will come good.